Today we will discuss the significance of bilateral investment treaties or BITs as a valuable tool to investors to protect their assets and investment. We will have this discussion in the background of the recent dispute between Ken Energy and the Indian government. Now while it appears that Ken Energy and the Indian government have almost buried their hatchet, the journey of this dispute from institution of the arbitration to making of the award and to its eventual enforcement has offered us some valuable insights. For instance, the importance of the bedrock principle of fair and equitable treatment to investors to protect their assets and investment. Secondly, the approach of the arbitral tribunals while dealing with issues raised by the state regarding non-arbitrability of tax issues. And last, but of most importance, the issues faced by an investor while seeking to enforce an award. The origins of this dispute lie in a separate but similar case between the Indian government and Vodafone. Vodafone had purchased significant shares of a non-Indian company called Hutchison Bampoa. Hutchison Bampoa in turn owned substantial assets in India. Now the Indian government contended that this transaction led to Vodafone owing capital gains tax and withholding tax to the Indian government. Vodafone resisted this demand and the dispute eventually reached Supreme Court. Now, the Indian Supreme Court concluded this case in favour of Vodafone. Now, as a response to this decision, the Indian government amended the Income Tax Act with retrospective effect to tax all transactions where there is an indirect transfer of capital assets in India by a non-resident. Now, the amended tax law caught within its scope a transaction of Ken Energy of as far back as of 2006. The Income Tax Department raised a demand on Ken Energy of principal tax dues of approximately $1.6 billion. Ken Energy was also restricted from selling its shares in the Indian subsidiary which was involved in the 2006 transaction. On 21st December 2020, the Arbitral Tribunal passed a unanimous award rejecting the objections on jurisdiction. The Tribunal found that this was not a taxation case per se, but one of a tax-related investment dispute. The Tribunal carried out a balancing exercise between India's public policy objectives and one of preserving the values of legal certainty and predictability. As per the tribunal, the Indian government did not have a clear public purpose objective of introducing the retrospective tax. On the other hand, by imposing a new tax burden on a transaction that had already taken place and was not taxable at the relevant time, Ken Energy had been deprived of examining the consequences of its conduct. This violated the principles of legal certainty as per the tribunal and this according to the tribunal, was a core element of the fair and equitable treatment standard. Now, with this, the tribunal directed the Indian government to withdraw its tax demand and to further compensate Ken to the extent of $1.23 billion, along with further interests and costs. The Vodafone and Ken cases are a timely reminder of the limits placed by BITs on a sovereign's rights of taxation. Conversely, it also highlights the issues faced by an investor while seeking to enforce an award. For instance, Ken was also seeking to enforce the award against assets owned by state-owned entities for which it would have to meet a high bar to show that these entities are nothing but an alter ego of the state. Also, it is unclear whether Indian courts would be in a position to assist Ken with enforcement of the award in India, considering certain recent rulings of high courts casting doubt over whether these awards are recognized under the Indian Arbitration Act. Now, while these questions continue to remain unresolved, the fact that the Indian government has withdrawn the re retrospective tax amendment pursuant to the arbitral award certainly underscores the importance of BITs to protect the interests of investors. Mm -hmm.